Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. Well, here we are back again on the con floor, only this time we are at San Diego Comic Con, in my opinion, the biggest comic show in the country, and I wanted to take this opportunity to speak to some of the biggest comic dealers around and get their take on the current economic recession. How do they feel this market is going to affect comic books? This video is definitely on the longer side, but these dealers had a lot of great stuff to say, so I think it'll be well worth your watch. So Sit back, relax, and I hope you all enjoy. All right, well, I'm with Vince from uh, Comic Connect, Metropolis Comics. How's it going, Vince? It's going great. I'm having a great time here at San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, so Vince, I've been kind of going around the show and talking to different dealers. I always love to get dealers' perspectives on sure. the market and stuff. And the way that I'm framing this is, you know, 2021, obviously a big explosion with a lot of collectibles. We're in 2022 now, and global economic recession, things like that. My stock portfolio looks red all over the place. And I wanted to get a sense of, your thoughts on the comic market now what trends you've seen you've been in it since you know a long time you've seen ups you've seen downs what's your overall feeling on this market okay so here's what i think uh yes we've seen an explosion in the comic book and collectibles markets across all categories over the last two years uh, a combination of so many different things uh people being stuck in their house because of covid uh fomo fear of missing out um, keeping up with the Joneses, whatever you want to say, but people got really, really passionate about their comic books over the last two years, seeing what they're missing, what they want to sell, what they want to move into, um, and it's been really exciting. Now you have the war in Russia, uh, Ukraine, uh, you have uh, gas prices that were going through the roof, which are coming down now, uh, stock market, which is tanking a bit, uh, cryptocurrencies, which are tanking a bit, and yet, you know, the comic market, what happened to it? Well, in my opinion, um, it's doing great. It's doing great. Now, I wouldn't be telling you the truth if I said every part of the comic market is doing great. Of course, there are ebbs and flows in any market all the time. Um, what I've seen recently is that there's a tremendous passion and uh, focus on comic books, even during this tough alleged tough economic time because right. there's still tons of money out there there's still tons of people who are looking for comic books um, what I noticed recently is there have been a couple of uh, dips in certain areas of the marketplace but overall it's been very strong we're having a great show here at San Diego um, and through our auctions on Comic Connect as well as just uh, from our marketplace sales uh, fixed price on our website as well as uh, selling privately to clients. We're selling a lots of six and seven figure books over the last few months. So I personally am extremely bullish about the comic book market. And I, maybe, you know, some people might say, oh, but you live in a bubble. You're, you're just seeing the comic book. But you know what? I talk to a lot of people every day and they're still buying. My demand still outweighs the supply. If I had 10 copies of Detective 27, I could sell them all. Right. If I had 10 copies of Amazing Fantasy 15, as long as they're reasonably priced, again, you know, that you could sell them all right. very quickly. Uh, so there's no doubt in my mind that even in the small parts of the market that have s sort of slipped a little bit, have maybe gone into a valley, um, They'll be back up. Yeah, I've seen. I've been listen. I've been doing this for thirty six years. Right. I've seen it happen multiple times. Don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. Right. Comic books are great, and I believe personally that if you compare it to a lot of other collectibles categories, it's one of the best, if not in my opinion, the best, because you're talking about a, a very real sense of uh, scarcity. Um, especially amongst high-grade material, and especially uh, with golden age uh, material. Mm. Um, so I'm very bullish on this. I have seen this happen too many times where people go, oh my God, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. It's not true. Right. It's just not, it's not true. Stop it, calm down, take a break, take a deep breath. It's all gonna be okay. Vince, what's your kind of opinion of like the people right now who might be a little bit concerned of like buying or jumping into this market? What's your take or, or some advice you could give to them jump in head first baby just do it no seriously 
you, you take a look at our Comic Connect auctions, take a look at what we're doing, and you'll see that the market is very strong. There is tons and tons of very passionate collectors and investors still coming into the market. Um, we're seeing record prices being broken all the time, but there are also opportunities. So you have to look for those opportunities. Analyze the market, take a look at what recent sales have been, where it was a year ago, where it was two years ago, where it is in the last few months. And there's plenty of information. You can look at the sold section on ComicConnect.com. You can look at GP Analysis. You can look at Go Collect. There are plenty of different sources for information. Um, give me a call and we'll try to help you out and give you some advice. But even if you think there's a dip in the market, that's a great time to buy. You don't want to buy at the top of the market. You want to buy when it's coming down a little bit. And, and it, there are a lot of opportunities. I personally believe that the market is still very strong. I'm seeing uh, record prices that we've made, in, even on books that have, have seen some uh, slippage recently. But overall, you do have a healthy market, and you should feel very confident. And the market always comes back, even when you see some uh, values going down. But um, please do take a look at ComicConnect.com, take a look at the auctions, take a look at what we're doing, look at our sold section, and you'll see there are plenty of great opportunities for you out there. All right, well, Vince, thanks so much for talking, and I hope you have a great rest of the show. Thank you very much for having me, and, and seriously, people, keep loving comic books. It's the greatest American art form that was ever made. All right, well, I'm with Nico from Blue Chip Comics. Nico, how's it going, man? Hey, man, fantastic. We're at Comic-Con. It's only a blast here, right? Yeah, yeah, always a good time. So, uh, Nico, I've been kind of going around the show asking sure. different dealers, you know, just about their overall feelings of the state of the market. Obviously, 2021, huge boom period. Yeah. And now, global economy in 2022, you know, outside of comic books, kind of maybe thinking recession, all of my stocks are going down, things like that. But what's your opinion on comics right now? And how are you feeling as someone who's kind of been in the booms and the bust cycles? What's your feeling on the market right now? Hey man, I think that's a great question. You know, in fact, uh, being the blue chip comic, obviously, uh, you know, we're totally all about, we started out as collectors, right? And so I just got tired of seeing, um, you know, prices fluctuate and things. So I said, you know what? Let me start looking into this a little bit further and I started digging and I started realizing that, you know, comics have these cycles and they're going to be a two year window on blue chip items specifically, right? So a blue chip comic, if you look at the majority of the blue chip comics, historically, it's a two year maximum three year window and it, it goes back to its original value, but in most cases, higher than its original value. So if you could withstand that two to three year window on a blue chip comic, golden. Got it. So like kind of a, the floor value always sort of slowly creeps up, even if it goes back down? Oh, absolutely. Right. 100% on blue chip items. And that's why uh, I start saying, oh my gosh, okay. So uh, if I do this thing for real, like what's a good name for the company? And that's where we came up with the blue chip comic. Right, right. And you would define blue chips as what? More of like vintage um, stuff, silver, gold? There's three things. Um, yes, the answer would be yes. Yep. But uh, within that bubble, I would say um, rarity, right? How rare is that comic? Can, how replaceable is it? Can you just go up the street and buy another one? Right. Um, and then how relevant is it? Why is it relevant, right? right? And I think we're at the very beginning of what's possible based on, um, you know, Disney spending billions, over $70 billion right. on, on Marvel. I feel confident that they didn't do that to lose money. They do that right. to really just create so much content with that intellectual property. So I feel strong, very strong, long-term about this market effect. You know, we've even had real estate properties, other investments and other collectibles, and we've liquidated some of those collectibles just to be able to acquire uh, these blue chip um, books that are on the market today at a price that we couldn't get six, six months ago. Right, Like, so you're actually taking advantage of Absolutely. some of the opportunities now that you're seeing. A Absolutely, I, you know, I picked up that Hulk one behind me, I picked up, uh, and that was yesterday, I picked up uh, a few other, you know, what I would call blue chip keys because I think that the best time to acquire books is now, in my opinion, especially if you want to um, have that asset because depending on, depending on who you are at, at a certain price point, uh, collectible, no matter what, depending on what your yearly income is, becomes a um, investment. Yeah. So it's not just a, a collectible, it goes from a certain price point, depending on your income, to a collectible. So. If we're going to pick up collectibles, why not do it the most intelligent way uh, to really have our collection? You know, and I totally believe that if there's a book that you want, like for instance, you know, obviously I want some, you know, big, bigger book. I have a 7.5 AF15 over here. Yeah, I, no big deal. Yeah, but I want a 9.0. Right, right. right. And so what I did is I just bought placeholders. So the, the greatest tool that I've used is to buy the books now. 
you know, liquidate, you know, other investments to buy the book now. And this market, so as the market corrects and it starts booming, that equity doesn't just go up in the 90, it also goes up in my 75. So now my 75 appreciates with the equity as well. That would go to the 90, and now it bridges the gap and makes it so much closer, so much easier to obtain. Right, right. I always talk about on my channel, I always use like, you know, you just want to get in the neighborhood sometimes with certain books, yep. and even if it's a low grade, so you kind of adopt that strategy as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Get a placeholder, especially for a blue chip key, or even a, a major key in general, because if you don't have that placeholder, then you'll find yourself uh, paying so much more than you really should for the exact same book, because you could have had that placeholder, use that as trade, and, and we trade more than any other site on social media. That's yeah. our thing, actually. So when people don't have the cash in this market to uh, acquire books, they can come to us and uh, and we'll be happy to take their book and trade. And we actually pay uh, full market value on any of your first appearance keys. So we're one of the only dealers you will ever hear to buy your book at full market value. Um, and I, I can co-sign that because I, I did that exact thing where I got to upgrade my Avengers 1 yesterday. So and, really I'm, and I'm all about it. You know, yeah. anytime we can make a new friend, help you get out of a book at a high value, but also get into a bigger book um, at a very fair price, feel free. All right. Well, Nico, thank you so much for your time and hope you have a great rest of the show. Yeah. Can I give a shout out? Uh, yeah, absolutely. At the Blue Chip Comic. Give us, a sh give us a follow at the Blue Chip Comic. If there's anything you need, um, let us know. We love to work with you and anybody else. And um, we, we appreciate the relationship that we have, not just the deal. So thank yeah. you. All right. So I'm with Austin from Reese's Rare Comic Books. Austin, how's it going? It's good, man. How are you today? Good, good, good. So Austin, I've been kind of going around the show and just talking to the different dealers and sort of asking their opinions on the state of the comic collecting market. Obviously, 2021, everything blows up. Everything goes crazy. Money printing goes burr. Now we're in 2022 and, you know, the market... As, as far as like the global economy, global recession, everything has had a pullback. I want to kind of pick your brain and get a get your insider opinion on how you feel the market is now versus last year and what kind of trends you may be seeing or noticing. Sure, yeah, so uh, as you mentioned, the last two years have been really crazy for us. Uh, we saw a lot of new blood get into the hobby, a lot of new money get into the hobby, and I think for a lot of people, they were buying books. Six months later, those books had doubled. It felt like an infinite money glitch for a lot of folks. And, uh, and you know, I always tell people a healthy market goes up and it goes down this can't it's not sustainable for a market to just go one way forever so I actually think it's a good chance for people to buy books now uh, we've seen as you mentioned some books go down 20 to 30 percent in the last few months um, but overall in the last four years you know we're still on in that upward trend so you mentioned stocks I tell people a lot of times what I like to do is look at that 10-year view right and if you look from you know spider-man one from 2012 to now you know what is that line doing and we've kind of seen a consistent growth there so short term you can certainly nailed down you know books that have uh, fallen in the last few months but I think if you're in for the long haul as an investor or just a collector um, I think things are gonna be all right yeah definitely I mean uh, as far as like maybe trends do you still notice like what are people's buying habits like are people you know looking to maybe maybe are people are more apprehensive with some of the higher price books like the five figure books the four figure books things like that or, or do you actually notice people taking advantage of now's the time to buy that four figure book that has had its correction what, what's your thought yeah it really just depends on what people are comfortable with usually when we're talking about those caliber of books those people are a little more insulated uh, when the economy goes down a little bit you know if you're buying a five or six figure comic book and it dips 20 percent those aren't the guys that are selling into you know that kind of market they're the ones who are holding and doubling down um, but as far as what people are buying I think there are always sad collectors that are finding new yeah, opportunities a uh, for a long time we saw pre-code horror kind of dip a little bit in the golden age and now I'm starting to see a resurgence of guys going after that whether it's too cheap or they realize it, how scarce it is uh, we also see golden age DC you know starting to surge again so I think there's always opportunities out there for people you just have to you know know what you're looking for and really be plugged in all right well I'm with the one the only the golden age guru guru how's it going man it's going great man it's going great over here at San Diego comic-con Met freaking Swaggle House, so it's, uh, it's it's a great day already. Oh, well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So, Guru, I've been going around the show. I always like to talk to a bunch of dealers, get their opinions on the market. My question to you is, you know, someone who's been in this industry for a long time, buying, dealing, selling. Um, what's your feeling on the market, say today versus the market last year, and w what kind of trends are you noticing? Yeah, it's an interesting, or at least an interesting question because. Um, things going to go up and down. I've been in the industry for a long time and we had a very, very strong comic market for the last three years, two, three years, I'd say. Um, 
like exceptionally strong and we all felt it there's been a lot of complaining about prices being too high to get into and so sometimes you got to look at these little dips as an opportunity because there's going to be the, the group of people who always complain about it but when it drops they also get scared because then it's like oh look i was right it's dropping i've been saying it for 15 20 years and you never get in right you just don't make that move at some point if you're into comics and you have confidence that it's something you like to collect and you feel you can see it as something you can invest in at some point, you got to make that move and jump in, and this might be the time. Now, you still got to be smart and wise, obviously. You can't just buy a comic and assume that it's going to always go up or it's going to go at a certain pace as another. So be smart, be wise, do your research. If you're a little shaky and you don't like the broad market of comics, then get something that you know is tried and true through the years. Right. So I always recommend, if it's going down a little bit, take that chance to get into something because my biggest regrets are not buying books. Right. Uh, so that's always been the hardest ones. Right, right. They always say, you know, you, you only regret the books you don't buy. Yes. And, um, and, you know, a lot of the dealers have been talking about how they've been noticing a lot of, you know, pre-code horror being, you know, really hot recently. And so even yeah. with this economic downturn, I mean, they call you, you know, the golden age guru. Yeah. It feels like golden age books still are strong in, as a market. Is, is that your sense? Oh, great. Golden age books are very strong. Um, I... I don't know what to say other than uh, be careful with gold because you're not you're it's something it's a whole nother animal. So there's a lot of books printed from 1938 to 1955. I mean that's basically your whole gold scope. If you want to dissect it a little bit, you can go to the Atom Age, okay, Atomic Age, excuse me, where it's like around 47 to 55, and that's a lot of horror and romance books, crime books, uh, right before pre, you know right before things changed with the code. Um, you know ECs. They're really popular. They're really famous. There's a lot of smaller publishers for horror that I recommend too, um, but they were undervalued for a very long time, and there are a lot of them. So I can understand. So there's an opportunity to get there, especially in low grade. Um, but there's also a chance to buy them in high grade for very reasonable. You can get a 9.2 EC or 9.0, spend about five grand. You're like five grand for a lot of people is a lot of money. Yes, it is. But it, you know, in equivalent to some Silver Age keys, you know, you could be spending thirty grand for a 2.5 of something. Right. So Golden Age has always been my jam. Silver Age, there's a lot of it out there, so you can take your time, but sometimes with the gold, you find something, you just grab it because you have to at that time because you might not see it again. Right, right. Yeah, that's good good advice. Uh, so we're at San Diego Comic-Con. Yep. I always view San Diego Comic-Con as sort of like the marquee tent pole comic trade show, at least in terms of brand name. Yeah. You're here, we're in the vintage comic book area. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about this show in terms of it being a comic buying show? What's your sense? I mean, I know you're not like set up here or anything yeah. like that, so you haven't necessarily been selling, mm -hmm. but maybe you picked up a couple things. What, what's your sense of this show as a comic show? I, I mean, every year I say the same thing. This show is expensive. I feel like books are generally overpriced here. So and that's consistent again. I see a lot of big numbers on books, but with a market like this, it's hard to put a number on an item that you just don't normally see, and there's a lot of guessing going on. But it's also an amazing selection here. There's a lot of great books. So if you're looking to fill those holes or you just want to get something, you, you got to pay up here because a lot of people are doing that. Um, I like other shows better for picking up books, um, but I love the city of San Diego, and that's one of the main reasons a lot of people come here. Right. They um, they love this convention, yeah. so they welcome it, they invite it. Not every city is like that, so it gives a great vibe to everybody on the floor, outside of the con, and it makes you want to pick up books. And really, it's not that busy here, but it's busy enough to still have good shows for people, um, but it's not so busy where you can't, you know, quickly navigate through right, and get right. somewhere when you need to. Right. So um, I like this con for many things, and sometimes it's just hard to digest the numbers at a lot of these booths. Right, right. All right, the last thing before I let you go, you know, a lot of uh, some of the dealers I've been talking to have been mm -hmm. mentioning that, you know, the, a lot of the high-grade stuff or the, the rare stuff where, you know, in this market, it's like if you still have that opportunity, you still see that one book, you probably should still pounce on it, whereas like some of the other stuff, you can you can exercise a little more patience now yeah. in this market. Is that your sense in general? Like, would you give that sort of advice 
to people who are maybe they're, they're apprehensive to buy as, as maybe prices are going down? Like, what's your yeah. feeling on that? I mean, I can really dig- get into like minutia of little things. Yeah. So, but just to speak broadly, silver rate stuff, you have many opportunities because there it's everywhere online in conventions. So you could be a little patient, but if you see something that makes sense and you've waited, just just dive in, pick right. it up. Like you don't have to overpay because you can be patient. Golden age, it's a different animal. You know, you want a timely book, great, but don't just buy a timely because it's a timely. Think about for a second. If you're buying a Captain America comic, you're probably going to want a Captain America timely war time frame book, right. not just the gangster kind that went on later. Right. Okay. If you want to pick up a centaur, you know, I mean, pick up a good centaur. If you're going to do it and you're going to jump, get a good quality cover or artist. Schomburg, Lou Fine, Frazetta, I mean, L.B. Cole, if you're an L.B. Cole fan. Um, ECs, I mean, there's a lot of great covers there. So, yes, think about it for a second. Know what you want. And if you like the title, find out what's the best books in that title and go hunt them down. All right. Well, Guru, thank you so much for your time, and I hope you have a great rest of the show. You too, man. I appreciate it. All right. Well, I'm with Danielle from Nerdy Girl Comics. Danielle, how's it going so far? Hey, great. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. Uh, so we're at San Diego Comic-Con, and Danielle, I've been kind of going around the show and just talking to the different dealers and just getting their sense on the market. Yeah. Like, obviously, you've been doing this for a while. You've seen ups and downs and stuff. We're sort of in this global economic recession. Some collectible markets have taken hits. What's your feeling right now on comic books? Like, what have you kind of noticed? So I think that the things that went up too fast, irrationally, are kind of settling back down. Right. Really rare books like your golden age, blue chips, like Superman 1, Action 1, they're still going up. Right. But like Amazing Fantasy 15, the Silver Age books, where like they doubled and more than doubled where they shouldn't have done that, right? right? So we're seeing just, I think, a healthy settling. I think people, you know, I think people are coming back to cons, so we're not seeing the same crazy bidding in auction houses. I think a lot of people have been saving money for conventions. Mm. I've had a great show. I've talked to a few other dealers. Some of them have had really great shows. Some have had okay. Um, I think that in the next six months, we're going to kind of see it teeter up again. Somebody pulled the fire alarm. Well, that makes this interview kind of more fun, right? There's never a dull moment at San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, well, we'll go with it. We'll go yeah, with we'll it. Just we'll, roll. Let's keep yeah. going. What have you noticed, if anything, are there different trends in buying? Or are people looking for different things? Or are people, are people still kind of chasing the same, hey, Thor, Love, and Thunder, that was hot, let me get that book. But what's your thought on that? So I've had a lot of people interested in Hulk 181. Um, I sold an Avengers one this weekend. Mostly silver, bronze stuff. I did sell a Golden Age first Aquaman, mm-hmm. um, but that book is really rare, and it went to a Golden Age collector that I've known for a while. Um, I think another thing that we're seeing in the market too, though, is the correction in crypto. Right. And I don't think people realize how much money was coming into hobbies from crypto. Right, right. A lot of like kind of overnight millionaires in the crypto space that also love their pop culture and (laughs) love their collectibles. Lost half their value. (laughs) Right, 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 right. And then last question before I let you go is, uh, you know, if you got any worlds of words of wisdom or you know advice for the collectors out there maybe the ones that are apprehensive to buy in this current market what's your thoughts take advantage of these dips and stuff if if there are them if you can afford to be buying right now buy on the dip quality over quantity and if you collect what you love then you never go wrong very well said well danielle thanks so much for taking the time and i hope you have a great rest of the show thank you great meeting you all right well i'm with dale from dale roberts comics dale how's it going today very good very good how are you i'm doing well well we're at san diego comic-con and dale you know i've been going around the show talking to a bunch of the different dealers i always like to ask their feelings on the state of the market and things like that 2021 big explosion in prices now we're in 2022 and everything stocks crypto housing market everything is going down Maybe some collectibles and stuff too, but what's your feelings on comics in general? What have you kind of seen last year compared to this year as from your perspective? Uh, last year was indeed a wonderful year. So actually the last two years have been uh, very, very good as far as comics. Um, as far as right now, it's true that there are some uh, economic concerns within the country, but generally speaking uh comics have been vintage comics have been recession proof 
always when the stock market pulls back or real estate pulls back, it seems like a lot of money flies into the vintage comic market. Mm. If you look at any 10 year period since really since collecting has begun, in the last 40, 50 years, uh, comics have gone up at least 20% every 10 year period. So and it, you can't really say that for everything else. So. Right. Is that something that you kind of notice, like the, the boom and bust cycles of comics and maybe the rising floor prices from time uh, to time? Perhaps. Um, you know, when. It, what I see with collectors is generally when, if prices get too high on the books that there are their grails, their grail books or things like that, they simply settle for a lower a lower grade than they would have before. Right. So uh, go to a lower price point. But uh, overall, uh, I've had some of my best shows ever this year, uh, despite uh, despite the economic worries of some. I don't know. I mean, none of us know the future, but uh, I don't really anticipate much of a pullback. Even in 2001, after September 11th, you know, maybe had a 10% pullback uh, for that year. Uh, Same thing 2008, 2009, during that economic crisis. You know, a little pullback as far as numbers of sales, not necessarily in prices. Um, But, you know, some of the, some of the, free money was you know for for some people was was not there right right but for the most part it's been very good so then would you say like in in this kind of market seems like probably good opportunity to if you see deals or or pullbacks in prices and stuff if you have the means an opportunity to buy right Uh, right now you should be looking to pick up a hulk 181 when the price is lower than it's been in the last three years right uh, same way with X-Men 1, you saw a run up and then it's kind of pulled back, not all the way back to where it was before. But just like with the stock market, you, if, if you were financially able, you should uh, look at that as an opportunity to capitalize. All right, well, I'm with Ted from Superworld Comics. Ted, how's it going? It's going great. Uh, it's nice to talk to you. What's your current feeling on the market? And as someone who you know sells and deals a lot of comic books, what, what have you kind of noticed in terms of trends this year or even in these last couple of months versus maybe what we saw before well it's like you said uh in in 20 and 21 uh things just heated up unbelievably and and it was it was like things were just selling themselves and jumping off the shelf uh, i knew it couldn't maintain because prices were creeping upward like this and you figure it's got a level so it has level and um but the thing is the way we structure our business we don't let ourselves get irrationally exuberant, so to speak, right. or irrationally gloomy. Right. Uh, and, and we just don't change the way we do business regardless. So right. for us personally, even though things have leveled, there's still plenty going on. Right. You know, uh, people are loving collectibles and comics are leading the way, man. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I mean, so I guess, you know, as far as the you know, trends of this show so far, have you noticed buying habits a little bit different like you know are people not as willing to say buy that four figure key as they were you know a a little bit ago or or what kind of trends do you notice if any I would say that is the case Uh, the thing about it is the the big key books uh, especially the number ones and all that stuff they're always going to be in demand Uh, I have noticed though that they're not selling as quickly Right. like now it's a matter of it might take um, a month as opposed to uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but um, in term, overall, uh, the good quality stuff is just still in demand. Guys are being a little more careful, a little more picky, uh, you know, and, and they're more targeted. Right, right. That, that's kind of what I've heard from other people say as well, where it's like maybe a little bit of that hesitation. But, but what do you feel as, you know, someone who's been getting comic books and, and maybe some advice, like, do you feel like, Maybe when there's hesitation, that might be a good time to jump on that opportunity if, it, if you see it. Certain things, yes, absolutely. It's funny because by and large, I think we're kind of programmed to go with the crowd. Yeah. And like, FF48's hot. I gotta have it, you know? Right, right. And uh, so you'll pay more and more and more. But then maybe FF49 is not getting the attention and you know it's a great book, um, and it, that that's the time to grab something like that. Right, you want to go to where the, the waters are cool, so to speak. Exactly. I mean, there's definitely opportunity. 
I, I do look at it that way. All right. Well, well. La last question for yourself, I guess. You know, what would you say if there there's someone out there who, you know, maybe they're a little apprehensive to you know buy into this market are you feeling pretty good overall you still kind of like the long-term view of comic books whether they're your collector or investor like what's your overall take and what would you say to those people oh I'm bullish I am definitely bullish I've seen the cycles we've been in business 35 years now and I've seen cycles up down up down and and what I've been finding is with comics and what's great about them the good stuff now I'm talking about not just the the new trendy thing where it might crash or but the blue chips the blue stuff. chip the, the vintage stuff that has scarcity um, it might you know go up and then it'll level it might even come down slightly but not much and then it'll go up again at some point it'll it's been cyclical and it's been really almost miraculous it's been really fantastic so I would fully encourage and I also say, get what you really enjoy. You know, yeah. the whole reason that this business has worked for me is because I just was a collector, you know, for years, and I just got what I like. Buy those books you like, and you can't go wrong, right? Exactly. All right, well, I'm with Ali from Elite Comics 11. Ali, how's it going, man? It's going great, man. Some people say that comic books are recession-proof. Some collectible markets have been hit in this sort of global economy. What's your feeling? as someone who does a lot of live streams and sales and stuff, what's your feeling on the buying habits of people right now? Or what are you seeing out there in the market? I think there was like 2021, even the year before that, a lot of crazy growth for sure. A lot of new entrants in the marketplace, right? People coming in for different reasons. There's of course the collectors and then there were, there's definitely the investors as well. So I think, you know, generally, I mean, we know what's going on with the broader economy. I think comics have actually held up pretty well compared to some of the other stuff we're seeing. And so, I mean, yeah, there's been a little impact maybe on the really, really high end kind of investor types, kind of figuring out what they want to do with everything kind of adjusting in general. Right. But uh, yeah, no, we do daily live sales. Collectors, you know, they're still picking up books. The The big books are going. People are excited here at San Diego to hear the announcements tonight. Yeah, yeah. So still a lot of a lot of a uh, lot of fire in the market and and people are really uh looking for you know people every day on elite comics 11 just check out our live sales and uh, you'll see what i'm talking about people a lot of excitement around comics that's not going anywhere right right you do so you mentioned like you maybe some of those like we're talking like five figure range books maybe those aren't as say liquid is that fair to say yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think at the the higher end kind of investment type books, like, you know, they're a little harder to sell, like, right now, currently at this moment than yeah. they were maybe last year. But you also have to remember that there were some natural cyclical things during the year before yeah. kind of the pandemic life. Right. right. And we're in summertime, right? So right. vacation, stuff like that. So I'm not worried about that. I think it's pretty normal. Things you know a lot of these books really took off so a little little slow down this time of the year i think that's that's natural especially when you see what's happening in the other sectors of the economy totally. and the investment world all right well it wouldn't be a show unless i got to talk to my favorite dealer brad how's it going really well here we are san diego yeah absolutely well Brad, I've been kind of going around the show asking about, you know, dealers' opinions on the state of the market. Obviously, everything is going to zero. You're going to give me your entire booth right here for free because yeah. it's all it's well, all worthless. Well, but. let me tell you how I do that. So yeah. I go, okay, so you buy one book, it might be 20% off. If you buy maybe a dozen books, I might go 25% off. If you buy it all, it's free. Yeah, yeah exactly. So I'm going to make a deal after we film our video. But... Uh, but Brad, so you know, I, I really wanted to get a sense. I mean, you've been dealing for a long time. 2021 was crazy with the explosion of prices. 2022, global recession. What's your just general feeling on the market right now as you've seen it in, I guess, this calendar year? Well, and again, let's just say in the last two or three months, because really the calendar year, uh, 2022, it started out in the same sort of boom. There was still a fervor for uh, the kind of books that I don't feel are rare, Giant Size X-Men, uh, Bronze Age Keys, uh, the, the Super Keys, they did continue to go up and then scared off some of the buyers. I knew this was going to happen. Um, it's a fluctuation in the market. Uh, the prices on some books have stagnated. It's created a, a lull and a pause for some of these buyers. They're afraid to buy in is this the height are they going to buy at the height of the market 
and then find out that their investment wasn't a, a positive return. Mm. Collectors have a different theory. I feel as a collector that you just want to keep asking for a deal, shop around, get that book before it's too late, put it away, and don't think about it. If you put it away for time, you're going to be okay. Right. These things are not forever. It's cyclical. What happens is prices jump. There, are, For instance, two years ago, Hulk 181 was the, the, the book of the show. Every dealer was buying Hulk 181s from other dealers and then adding 50% to them. Right. So all of a sudden, an 8.5 went from 4,000 to 10,000. But now it stayed at 10,000 8.5s. Some people bought a little higher than that, and I'm sorry, they might be out of luck for a few years. Right. So yeah, it's um, it's a scary little time for big books. It has changed the market. Uh, there are those deals to look for. Continue uh, possibly looking to fill runs. Make sure you get the highest grades you can and just try to talk people down. That's what you do. That's how you do it. What, what's kind of moving at this show? How are, how are the buyers here? What, what's the, what's, what are the collectors like? My biggest show about five years ago was San Diego. Now it's my least biggest show. Mm. And that is really sad because, first of all, it's expensive to be here, both a dealer and a buyer. The hotels, the travel, everybody used to be deals, happy hours, uh, green drinks, and there are all kinds of fun. No, the fun is still here, but people spend their money on being here. So they don't come up and say, hey, I got so much for a comic. It, it just isn't there yet. Yeah, right. So it was really slow, and I was worried. I, uh, I actually, uh, actually sold a little space to a friend of mine because it costs so much to be here. Yeah, yeah. So to defer the cost, and then the judgment, is it going to be good? The first two days, I was like tanking. I literally wasn't doing half of my normal daily. But then yesterday, two giant books sold, and now I'm at my okay price. Right, right. And I still have two more days, so this could end up being decent. They're, the guys keep looking at stuff and coming back, guys and girls. They keep looking and looking and coming and going, and then they, go, they come and stand here and say, I'll take it. So yesterday I sold a Tells to Astonish 27 I had for four years and couldn't sell. It went up in the pandemic. I marked it down from that price and it sold for that price. Right. Far more than I would have gotten four years ago. So I can only be happy about holding on. Right. So patience as a dealer, uh, still find the books. Let me just say, if you can, what I bought here. So when you can't sell, start buying. So got myself a journey into mystery I got myself a 90 Spidey 2 how about this Avengers a look at that black cat come on people look at this ghost these ghosts golden age I thought were a couple thousand they're like five or six thousand now you got crime suspense stories how about this X-Men 4 just got it so you know you, you just have to go around you keep investing I have no fear in this market. Comic books have done nothing but be better and better every year for me. All right, well, last kind of question before we kind of round it out. I guess, what would you say to, you know, the, the collectors, the buyers out there that, you know, have that little apprehension? I'm afraid to jump into this book. It's gonna go to zero, it's gonna go lower. Yeah. I mean, should you take, because I'm hearing a lot of people talking about that hesitation, but it feels like if there's hesitation, maybe this is, maybe there's that opportunity in, in uncertainty. Sure. Uh, just remember that if you haven't bought it yet, it's still in your control to how you buy it. I mean, let's, let's face it. Hesitation is only good if you do it for a few seconds to think what you're doing right before you do it. Right. If you hesitate and hesitate, you're going to blow it. Um, my philosophy was I only regret the books I never bought. Right. I say it. I've said it when I was 12 and I... I still say the same thing. Only hesitate to make sure you've done your homework. Right. Look at the current prices. Don't take the, the outliers, the highest sold and the lowest sold, and drop them. Average that out and be somewhere in the middle and you'll be fine. You're, you're never going to get hurt 
on super keys or vintage silver. Get the highest grade you can for the best price you can. That's straightforward. Uh, don't worry about that. Fill your collection because for new buyers, younger people, I mean, look, uh, my collection, I don't want to die with my comic books. That's rule number one. But for young collectors, you got time, man. Put these things away for 20 years, then see what happens. Well, I hope you all enjoyed those conversations. Definitely a lot of great knowledge coming from all the dealers, but there were a few other pearls I wanted to share before we wrap up. Jeff from Angelo's Comics felt like buyers were definitely going to be more cautious during this time, but that there was still a lot of money to be made in this market if you focus on high grades and undervalued books. Phil from Champion Comics felt like prices just got way too out of hand too fast and that the market needed this correction, but he felt that if you continue to buy what you like and stay patient, you will eventually see those returns. Will from Torpedo Comics felt like this was a really unique time because while some people are panicking to sell, others are looking to take advantage and buy, so that creates a lot of volatility in the market. But overall, he felt that if you hold on, you'll be okay, and he was doubtful it would ever go to zero. Well, let me know what you guys think. I tend to agree with most of the dealers that if you buy what you like, you can't go wrong. I guess for value's sake, you just gotta hope that what you like, others will also like in the future. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.